Hello friends. Today we shall discuss cement treated subbase as suggested in IRC 37-2018 for flexible payments. The subbase layer in a payment serves three functions. It provides a strong support for the compaction of the granular base layer. It protects the subgrade from overstressing and it serves as drainage and filter layer. The subbase layers can be made of granular material which can be unbound or chemically stabilized with additives such as cement, lime, fly ash and other cementitious stabilizers. These chemical stabilizers are available commercially in variety of names and they are collectively called commercial chemical stabilizer or CCS. When cement is used or lime is used then the layer is called cement treated subbase layer. The material for CTSB as suggested in IRC 37 may consist of soil, riverbed material, natural gravel aggregates, reclaimed concrete aggregates, crushed aggregates or soil aggregate mixture modified with different cementitious materials such as cement, lime or commercially available chemical stabilizers. The recommended minimum thickness of CTSB layer is 200 mm. The strength of CTSB layer is measured in terms of 7 days UCS that is unconfined compressive strength or cube strength and this value should be 1.5 to 3 MPa. Design of flexible payment as per IRC 37 requires modulus value for each layer and in the case of CTSB layer it can be estimated by this equation 1000 UCS. Now here UCS is the 28 days unconfined compressive strength of the 7 TCS granular material. However, IRC SP89 suggests the 7 day UCS of CTSB as 0.75 to 1.5 MPa. But this should be used only in case of low volume roads where traffic or design traffic is less than 10 MSA. It is not suggested to be used in case of major highways. And in case of major highways, the UCS should be 1.5 to 3 MPa. The average laboratory strength value should be more than 1.5 times the required field strength. So that is a factor of safety. So if you are targeting a strength of 1.5 MPa in the field, then in the laboratory you should get 1.5 into 1.5, that is 2.25 MPa. Grading of material to be used in cement treated subbase material should satisfy the grading 4 of table 400.1 of MORTH 2013, which is reproduced here. And if you plot it on a grain size distribution curve, then this is the upper limit of the grading, the upper and the lower limit of the grading. And the final grading after proportioning of aggregates at site should be as close to the midpoint of these ranges as possible. The term here cementitious and cementated are same and therefore this, these two terms have been used interchangeably in IRC code. Now this grading curve is used to determine the coefficient of uniformity D60 upon D10. Now D60 is the size of the aggregate, final aggregate corresponding to 60% passing and D10 is the size of the aggregate in the final mix corresponding to 10% fine. And this value should not be less than 5. That is the criteria for grading. Other physical requirement of the aggregate impact value should be less than 40%, uniformity coefficient should not be less than 5 and material passing 425 micron sieve should have liquid limit less than 45 and plasticity index less than 20. Now these are the requirement of the material. Cement, cement can be either ordinary Portland cement as per IS 269 or it can be slag cement or can be PPC that is Port Portland Pozzolana cement as per IS 1489. Mixed end procedure for a cement treated subbase material is a six step process. The first step is the proportioning of aggregates. And as I told you, the idea of proportioning of aggregate is to get the final grading very close to midpoint of the range 
specified at each sieve size. Let me take an example here. Suppose at site you have four aggregates, 40 millimeter, 20 millimeter, 10 millimeter and dust. And these are to be mixed in a suitable proportion to get the desired grading, which is close to the range at each sieve size. So here there are several methods. I have discussed all these methods in my another video. You can watch that video on proportioning of aggregates. Here I have discussed the trial and error method, graphical method and analytical method. Suppose you take any one of these three method and you get the proportioning of aggregate like this, that 40 millimeter size should be 45%, 20 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10% each and thus 35%. So when you mix these aggregates in this ratio, you get the final grading like this. And here you can see this is the midpoint and you are getting the grading which is very close to midpoint, almost midpoint. So this gives you maximum density. Now once you proportion these aggregates, next is to plot them here. Just to see whether your final grading is between these two lines or not. And this final grading is used to determine the coefficient of uniformity. So corresponding to 60% passing, you get a size here. Let us say that size is 20 millimeter. And similarly, corresponding to 10% fine, you get a size here and say that size is 0.3 millimeter. So the CU value is 20 upon 0.3, that is 66.7. And I told you this should be more than 5. So that satisfies the condition of grading. Now you can also carry out certain tests on physical property of the aggregate, determine the aggregate impact value, liquid limit, velocity index, and all these values should be within permissible limit. Liquid limit is liquid limit and velocity index are determined on the material passing 425 micron, and these are the limiting values. Once you get the proportioning of aggregate, the next step is to determine the cement content required. And this cement content should be sufficient to provide a UCS of 1.5 to 3 MPa. And as I told you earlier, the laboratory test, laboratory value should be 1.5 times the minimum field UCS value and therefore the target value in the laboratory should be in this range. In the case of cement subbase material, the cement content is generally specified in the contract because this is in the range of 3 to 4% only generally 3%. Now, once you decide the cement content in the, in the sub-base material, then the next step is to conduct doctor test to determine the optimum moisture content and maximum dry density. So, this test is conducted on aggregate mixture plus cement and you can start with 3% water content and then increase the water content in steps of 0.5 or 1%, add water, mix properly, compact in the proctor mold, and because size is larger and if you are using it for highways, modified proctor test will be conducted. And for each increment in the water content, take fresh material and plot the compaction curve and find the OMC and maximum dry density. Next step is to determine unconfined compressive strength, that is QB strength. And this is obtained at proctor density and proctor or optimum moisture content. So prepare the cube of aggregate plus cement at OMC and MDD and here this maximum dry density is useful to determine the material required for preparing each specimen. For example, volume of the cube will be 3375 cm cube and if you assume the density of the mix as 2.15 gram per cm cube, then required quantity of the material to prepare one cube will be this volume multiplied by density that is 7.26 kg. And if you remember, we have taken the proportioning of aggregate like this 45% of 40 millimeter, 10% of 20 millimeter size, 10% of 10 millimeter, 35% of dust. And therefore, you can find out what would be the weight of each of these component of the mix in one cube. And cement will be 3%, let us say. So each part here will be divided by 1.03. So you get all these weight and this total is 7.256, same as you obtained here. Now, after proportioning of these materials, then you prepare this cube 
and at least three specimens should be prepared. Then they are tested after seven days of curing and that is the QB strength. Now this QB strength should be as per your design guidelines. The next test is durability test. Now durability test is not specified by IRC 37 but IRC SP 89 2010 provides two methods of determining durability of cement treated base or sub base material. The first method is for moderate temperature and climatic conditions which is simple method and method two is for areas having large variation in temperature and climatic conditions. In both methods sample size is same as taken for UCS that is the cube of 15 centimeter size. Now in first method two set each of three specimen are prepared. First set is cured for seven days in humid conditions by keeping specimen in desiccators and then immersed in water for next seven days. The second test is cured in humid conditions for 14 days and then determine the average compressive strength of both the sets and the loss in strength due to water is strength of the first set of specimen divided by strength of the second set of specimen and this value, this ratio should at least be 80% or 0.8. The second method is wet and dry test or freeze and thaw test as per IS 4332.4. Now here also you prepare three specimens, immerse the specimen in water for five hours and then dry it at 71 degrees centigrade for 42 hours. After that a specimen is brushed in a standardized manner with the wire brush with 20 strokes on the side and four strokes at each end and record the loss in weight after brushing. Now this is one cycle. Carry out 12 such cycles and determine the total loss in the weight after 12 cycles. Freeze and thaw test is similar to wet and dry but the test cycle consists of freezing the sample at minus 23 degrees centigrade for 24 hours followed by thawing at 21 degrees centigrade for 24 hours and then sample is brushed in the as in the case of wet and dry test. In both cases, the loss in weight after 14, 12 cycles should not be more than 14%. So that is the durability test as specified in IRC SP89. So test report, final test report will consist of proportioning of aggregate, a table showing test results of OMC, MDD, liquid limit, plastic limit, impact value and design cement content, the UCS value at 28 days and 7 days, 28 days required to determine the E value and E value of the mix based on UCS. So that is how you design a cement treated sub basement layer. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any question, you can write in the comment box.